to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess. So, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, 
to my fall, to my fall, to my most grievous fall. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and thee, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. in the highest, and on earth peace the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when God, when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high, becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in, in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Mount Easton. The word of the Lord. Amen. begging 
for the Father to be merciful to us. And in the Gospel, we find the compassion of God in Jesus, narrated in the healing of Bartimaeus, the blind man. Though physically blind, Bartimaeus saw and felt that he could turn to Jesus, could appeal to Jesus, and receive pity and compassion. Now he was sitting by the side of the road, and Jesus was passing by, and he called out to Jesus, Master, have pity on me. Master, have pity on me. And we have this very beautiful moving image of Jesus. He's, we are told, he stopped. And, and stopped and asked his disciples to call the blind man uh, uh, to him. My dear friends, in our world today, when a lot of us are, are having fast lives, we, it's, sometimes it's hard to stop for someone, to listen to the someone, to reach out to someone. But here we have this beautiful image of Jesus stopping for somebody on the side of the road. I mean, and taking time uh, for this person, trying to listen to him. And so, this compassionate Jesus asked this blind man, what can I do for you? And here, the Son of God is reaching out, or reaching down, lowering himself with compassion uh, to the suffering, suffering blind man. And the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus told him, be on your way. Your faith has saved you. And after being restored to sight, Bartimaeus, as the Gospel says, expressed his faith by following Jesus up the road. He showed his gratitude by becoming a disciple of Christ. And thus, the humble compassion of God in Jesus was matched by the faith of Bartimaeus. Now, my brothers and sisters, we all clamor for God's compassion. Many times, we beg the Lord to have pity on us. And we are reminded in this gospel that the Lord listens. He stops. He takes time for us. Because He is a compassionate God. He is concerned for us and He cares for us, His children. And after experiencing God's compassion, many of us will say thank you. But the question is, do we follow Him? Do we become more and more His disciples? Will He find in us a kind of faith that Bartimaeus exhibited in the Gospel? It is one thing to beg the Lord to be compassionate to us, but it is another thing to follow the Lord to follow Jesus after, after experiencing His compassion. Faith and gratitude to the compassionate Lord is seen in discipleship. It is seen in following Him and be committed to Him. And just like our names, it is not enough to, to ask for God's mercy. It is not enough to say, yes, Lord, thank you. I believe in you. My gratitude is shown in a life of discipleship. So let us thank the Lord for the many times that he has taught for us. 
that he has listened to us, that he has healed us and restored us in so many ways. But let us also recall the times when the Lord, uh, uh, when, when those moments when we just did that and, and did not do anything else. Did those moments lead us to a deeper faith, a deeper following of Christ as disciples? Has our life changed because God has been compassionate to us? Or is it just business as usual? Even with the many times we have received blessings from the Lord. My dear friends, let us not waste God's compassion to us. Let us receive it in faith and in a life of discipleship. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets? I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord has done great things for us, and so we look to God. Now to satisfy our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that we all may be imbued with true missionary spirit and be given the courage to proclaim the good news of what we say and what we do, near and far, to the neighbor we know and the neighbor we haven't yet met. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers for leaders around the world, that they may be committed to the pursuit of justice for all peoples, especially those who are persecuted for their faith, culture, or background. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That we may transform the wasteland of discord, selfishness, and the lies to medals of peace, generosity, and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For missionaries who dedicate their lives to bringing Christ's message and love to all people around the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That we will follow the example of Jesus, responding to the cries of those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our parishioners living and deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us gather our prayers and petitions into one by praying a prayer for the sinner. You have the copies on your pews. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. 
Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and simple. Do not have death to promote this order. Do not have ignorance lead us down the wrong path or our thoughts or influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and of this right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Praise. 
for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and as constant at their session in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us all be together and Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of the shame of the
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in science we may one day possess and truth in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And you will be seated for some announcements. Last week we had nominations for six new members of our parish council, but we ran short of nomination ballots. So if you did not receive a ballot last week, please raise your hand and the usher will get you one for you to nominate six people. This is only for the people that were not able to vote last week. So please raise your hand if you need a nomination ballot so that way you can fill it out and turn it in on your way out of the church. Thank you. Also, uh, um, let me take this opportunity to personally uh, thank those uh, who helped, uh, sold, and uh, bought tickets for our raffle draw. No? It was a, a huge success. No? And so, uh, thank you for, uh, thank you also to those who work for it. No? So, God bless you all and for your continued support for our parish. No? Also, uh, it's been like almost 22 months since we we experienced this pandemic, and uh, it, and we have missed a lot of uh, things or practices that we sometimes do in our church because of it. Uh, and during the last uh, pastoral council meeting that we had, we kind of uh, think that it is a good time now to try to slowly go back to what we have been doing. So at the end of this Mass, before the final blessing, for example, we are going to pray the prayer for vocations. We cannot distribute yet the, the uh, vocation cross, but we will do the prayer of vocation. If you notice, we started bringing a bell also at the beginning of the Mass, uh, and, to, and just uh, uh, for the parents, for the children, uh, maybe next Sunday, uh, we are going to uh, to start again the, the, the collection basket for children you know, and and uh, prayer for blessing for the birthday celebrants at, at the first uh, Sunday of the month. Okay. Please stand. Let us now. Uh, recite the, the vocation prayer uh, which can be found on your uh, uh, music book. It's the back cover. Prayer for vocations. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the savior of the world. It is manifest in your church. The spirit from you also abundantly bestowed on your apostles. Call me into priesthood and religious life within our community. May the seal for your glory and for the salvation of the world. In flame, let us you have chosen. May they be saints in your likeness. May your Holy Spirit strengthen them. May they be priests and religious according to your own heart. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of the Almighty God be upon you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing song is number 41. I have decided to follow Jesus, verses 1 and 3.